I'm the Maths Prof and today I'm going to show you how to factorise quadratics. Hopefully you've seen my video on multiplying out double brackets and so you'll know that these questions, when we're factorising them, we're putting them into a set of double brackets. Okay, so in the first question, I'm going to write out my double brackets and the first part's quite easy because how do you get x squared? Well, you multiply x by x. So that first part's easy. x times x gives us x squared. Now, because these are both plus, I know that these have to be both plus as well. And to find this number here, okay, we have to think about what multiplies to give this. Okay, so what are the factors of 21? So there could be more than one pair of factors. In this one, you could have 1 times 21 or 3 times 7, and that's it. So there aren't too many factors for 21. Now, we can't just choose any old one and put them in the brackets. They also have to add together, together to give 10. Okay, so these two numbers that are going to go inside the brackets must multiply to give 21. So it's one of these, one of these pairs. But they must also add to give positive 10. Well, I can see here, 3 times 7 is 21, and 3 plus 7 gives me 10. So, they're the numbers that we have to fill in inside our brackets. And it doesn't matter on the order, you could put the 3 in this one, and the 7 in this one, or you could do it the other way around. So, just like when you did the simple core factorising, I think it's a good idea just to check, or at least in your head, do a check. When you expand these brackets, it should take you back to what you started with. So, x times x is x squared, 3 times 7 gives us the 21, and then we've got a 3x and also a 7x, which would simplify to give 10x. So I know I've done that one correctly. Okay, now let's look at the second one. So again, I know it's going to be a double set of brackets, okay, because I've got x squared, x and a number, so I know that should be a double set of brackets when I'm factorising. I'm going to fill in the x's because that gives me my x squared there at the beginning. Now, again, they're both plus, so I'm just going to put my plus in there. Now, these numbers multiply to give 24. So, think of the factors of 24. We've got 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, okay? They're all the factors of 24. So, I just know those because I know my times tables. So it is really important to know your times tables because you'll be much quicker at doing these type of questions. Now, remember, these two numbers multiply to give 24, but they must also add to give 14. So we're going to look down our list to find out which pair add to give 14. So it must be those two because 2 plus 12 gives me 14. So I'm going to fill those in. And remember, the order doesn't matter because these are both positive, so 2 here and 12 here, all the other way around. Okay, now on to example 3. So again, I know it's double set of brackets here. I'm going to fill my x values in. Now, don't put any signs in just yet, okay, because we have to be careful there's a minus in this one. Remember, these two numbers must multiply to give 18. Okay, but at the same time, they're going to be adding to give a negative number. Well, I know that means they both have to be negative because a negative times a negative will give me a positive and those negative numbers will also add to give a negative number. So I'm going to write down the factors of 18, but the negative one. So negative one times negative 18 gives me 18 or negative two times negative nine also gives me 18, or negative three times negative six. So there are my factors of 18 in this question. Now, which pair add to give negative 11? So look down your list, and I can see it's the second one there. When I add minus two and minus nine together, it gives me minus 11. So I'm gonna put those in, and both of them are negative. So again, the order doesn't matter in this question. It doesn't matter if you put the two in this one or in the second bracket, okay? So again, just keep checking in your head, multiplying out just to make sure it takes you back to what you started with. Okay, now, next example, number four. So again, 
double set of brackets. You can fill in the X. Now, I need factors of negative 36. So there are going to be lots this time because this is negative. We could have 1 times negative 36 gives me negative 36 or negative 1 times positive 36. So for each set of factors, we're switching the sign between the two. Okay, so we're going to have double the amount of possibilities this time. We could also have 2 times minus 18 or minus 2 times 18. We could have 3 times minus 12 or minus 3 times 12. We could have minus 4 times 9 or 4 times minus 9 or 6 times minus 6. There are loads, okay? So, the more practice you get at these questions, the easier it will become. So you're not required to write out all of these. You might get good and you might be able to think of it in your head instead of writing them all out. But if you get stuck, this is a good system. If you can't find the factors, if you write them all out, it's much easier to spot them. So which pair add to give five? So just to save a bit of time, I know it's this one down here. Okay, if I add minus 4 and positive 9 together, it gives me positive 5. So these are my numbers. So just be careful when you put the numbers in this time, because the 4 must be negative. So you have to put x minus 4, and this 9 is positive, so you have to put plus 9. So the signs are important. This minus has to be with the 4 value. Alright, now, next one. So same thing again, a double set of brackets, fill in your x values. Now, factors of negative 12, so you could have 1 times minus 12 or minus 1 times 12. You could have 2 times minus 6 or minus 2 times 6. Or you could have 3 times minus 4 or minus 3 times 4. Okay, so which pair add to give negative 4. Remember the sign is important, don't ignore the sign. So which ones add to give negative 4? It must be this pair here because positive 2 plus negative 6 gives me the negative 4. So the 2 is positive so I put plus 2 and the 6 must be negative. Okay so x times x gives me the x squared 2 times minus 6 gives me this one here, minus 12. And then you've got your minus 6x plus 2x, which would simplify to give negative 4x. Okay, now the last one. Now this one is also a double set of brackets. Even though it looks a bit different, it's still a double set of brackets. And I'm going to put in my x values as before, which give me the x squared. Now remember, these numbers here multiply to give the number, and then they add to give the x term. Well, there is no x term in this one. So it's like saying x squared plus 0x minus 25. So in this one, the numbers multiply to give negative 25. So 1 times minus 25, or minus 1 times 25, or 5 times minus 5. Well, it's obviously going to be the last one, because if I add these together, they give me zero, which is why there's no x term. So it's plus 5 minus 5, or minus 5 plus 5. It doesn't matter which way around you put them. So you've got your x squared, you've got your 5 times minus 5 to get the minus 25, and then you've got your 5x and minus 5x, which cancel each other out. So it's zero x, so there's no x term. Okay, so this last one will lead me on to my next video, which is the difference of two squares. Okay, so it's another factorising um, example I'm going to do. Okay, thank you and bye-bye.